how do you even define an iMessage game? You know, the tiny games you text on your iPhone? Like, I don't really know where to put them on the scale of entertainment. They're technically video games, but their gameplay replicates rec room games or old tabletop games in a virtual space with the pacing of a text message service. Imagine a game of Mancala, but every turn has shipping and handling. How it generally works is you pick a game, send a text prompt to an individual, and from there you text your turns back and forth to each other. These games are accessible, extremely appealing to the casual crowd, and one of the most insignificant ways to entertain yourself. And I'm gonna be critically ranking every single one of them. We have 23 to rank today from worst to best, and I'll be judging them on how well they feel, how well they fit the texting formula, and if they're actually, well, fun. Also, this is all subjective, so uh, don't pout and cry on how low I rank freaking dots and boxes. Hey, what did I just say? Don't cry. Starting off our list is dots and boxes. I don't even know what to say. The whole concept of the game is just boring. You take turns connecting dots to create boxes. The goal is to finish the most boxes by the end of the game. Once you finish a box, you get to go again, but really what it boils down to is a game trying to avoid making boxes until one player gets to finish all of them. Look, I'm sure there's strategy to this, but I just don't care. At least whenever you would play this game on the kids menu at Applebee's, you would have the satisfaction of filling in the dots with your pencil, but you don't even get the bare minimum here. It's boring, it's bad, not even worth sending to someone. F tier. Okay, I might get some flack for this one, but Sea Battle is the pure definition of a snooze fest. It's Battleship. Everyone knows Battleship. You arrange your ships in whichever way you want them, and you take turns blindly firing missiles to destroy your opponent. I enjoy Battleship, but unlike the classic, Sea Battle is a slog to get through. Again, I'm ranking these based on feeling, fit, and fun, and Sea Battle just doesn't fit the texting formula as well as you would think. The game has little strategy, but it's mainly luck-based. This means you have a pretty big chance of missing shots, which isn't a problem in classic Battleship because you're in the same room playing at the same time, quickly firing back at each other. Now imagine a game of Battleship where each turn has 20 minute intervals. And after finally waiting for your turn, you take two seconds to fire a missile just for it to miss and end your turn, repeating the 20 minute cycle once again. The sheer dissatisfaction of missing in sea battle is something I wouldn't want to wish upon my worst enemy. There's so many instances where you wait for so long for so little, and once you do finally get a hit, you gain a little burst of momentum just for it to abruptly stop and go back to square one. Now, there could be some arguments to this saying when playing these iMessage games, you aren't meant to just sit there and wait for your friend to respond, which is 100% true. But even with that in mind, I still feel like your actions within this game is such an insignificant way to entertain yourself. I mean, most of these games achieve that, but this is another level. At the very least, if I'm playing one of these games, make me think or swipe my finger or something. I'm not a big fan of receiving notifications for this thing every 30 minutes just to aimlessly fire missiles and miss 80% of the time. I like Battleship, but Sea Battle is a different story. Sea Battle, sea, even the name is annoying. Sea Battle, I see this in F tier. Paint ball. Uh, I'll be honest, I had high expectations for this one, even though I had no idea what to expect. <laughs> Paintball is quite literally a game of chance. You pick where you want to hide and predict where your opponent is going to hide. Once each player has made their choices, you shoot each other, and if you guess correctly, your opponent loses a life. Last man standing wins. Nyeh, nyeh. There's really nothing to this game that even warrants sending this to someone. I mean, to give it some credit, it is pretty satisfying hitting your shot, and the only reason it's above sea battle is you have more odds of hitting your more shots and it's faster paced. But with this game specifically, since it is all up to chance, this game could potentially prolong itself to the point where it's not even worth playing anymore. There's so many better games to choose from than this F tier. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I've never really liked Connect 4. 
I don't know. It, it's never appealed to me. I just never felt satisfied with the level of strategy or feeling from this game. You're just trying to connect four chips in a row. But I will say this. It, it's better to play in person. Four in a row sort of suffers in similar ways to sea battle as I feel like you wait for so long for so little. At least in four in a row's case, you physically see and feel like you're making progress each turn, Unlike Sea Battle, where some turns feel like you go nowhere. In all seriousness, Connect 4 isn't the worst thing in the world. There's just so many other games I would rather play. Moving up the ranks to D tier. Gomoku, also known as Five in a Row. Okay, the goal may be extremely similar to Four in a Row, but I do see a lot more potential strategy with this one. Unlike Four in a Row, where placements are limited to stacking chips and columns, Gomoku gives you the freedom to place all around the board, which is a plus, but also kind of overwhelming. This does give more strategy, but it also extends the game's length dramatically, which is my biggest complaint. When getting deep into a round and having potential long intervals between each turn, games can quickly become hard to keep track of, making it pretty easy to slip up. I feel like it's a game better suited for back and forth commitment rather than just sporadic turns. It's simple in concept, and really the only reason it's above four in a row is the potential strategy, and also the satisfying vibration you get from placing stones on the board, like, no joke, that's some bonus points right there. D tier. Shuffleboard. This game is like a bowl of quinoa. It's just bland. Yeah, there's really nothing substantial here. Each player aims their puck and adjusts their power. Once everyone is ready, you push your pucks at the same time, and whichever zone they end up in at the end of the round gets added to your total score, most points wins. You can bump and slide pucks on and off the board depending on your strategy, and uh, that's pretty much it. I don't know, this one didn't really do anything for me, and looking at the list here, it's just kinda there. D tier. It's checkers, where else does it go? 20 questions. Unlike almost all these games that are one-on-one, -on -one, 20 questions offers the ability to send this in group chats, which I definitely give it bonus points for. Other than that, it's, uh, it's 20 questions, all right. One player thinks of a secret word and everyone else has 20 questions collectively to try and guess what that secret word is. Super simple in concept and can be fun in the right crowd, or in this case, the right group chat. I don't mind it, but for me, it's just not that engaging of an iMessage game. As you can tell from this list already, I need something to slightly captivate me when playing these games, and this just doesn't do it for me. Like I said, I think it could be really fun with the right group, and I could see myself playing every once in a while, but for me personally, I just think it's alright. Rather play it than four in a row though, so uh, C tier. Okay, we're finally getting into the games that are actually more on the engaging side. Darts is an interesting one. I enjoy playing darts in real life, it's super satisfying. However, when it comes to virtual darts, I feel like it never feels right, and that includes this one. The controls in this one are very finicky and inconsistent. You swipe forward on your screen to toss your dart, but I feel like the power is never registered accurately. And with this specific game mode in mind, precision is crucial for winning, and when you don't have control over that, I feel like it just ends up being a game of who hits the last lucky shot. The pacing of the game is fine, it's pretty easy to pick up and play. I just find it hard to play a game revolving around accuracy that's out of your control. C tier. Tanks is just decent. <gasps> no. You take turns firing shots back and forth at each other with each turn having different wind conditions. You adjust your angle and power based on the wind and the first person to hit the opposing tank three times wins. It's fun in some aspects, but gets repetitive real fast. I think this game would have benefited from randomized terrain each game instead of just minorly adjusting the height of one side. I don't know, it's all right, but if you're looking to fix your tank cravings, seriously go and play this game called Pocket Tanks. It is so much better. C tier. Reversi is the virtual version of the classic game Othello. Each player starts with two chips in the middle, and the goal is to try and convert as many chips to your color by sandwiching the opposing color between your color, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. I'll be honest, I have some slight bias towards this game. I remember playing Othello with my older sister all the time at my grandma's, but objectively speaking, the game does have some solid strategy to it. 
games can be a little on the longer side, but I wouldn't say it's outrageous. I also think it's a game that's easier to come back to compared to a game like Gomaku. It's nothing too crazy, but I personally like the simplistic strategy and especially the satisfaction of filling the board and flipping tiles. If someone sent me this, I wouldn't be annoyed. B tier. Filler is one of the more unique games on this list. I actually enjoy this one a bit. It has a puzzly slash strategic feel to it. How it works is each player starts off on opposite corners of this color grid. You then take turns selecting a color adjacent to your starting position, and based on whichever color you select, you claim those colored squares as your own. The goal is to have the most territory by the end of the game. Not only are you growing each turn, but you gain more options to choose from when selecting colors. And this is where the strategy comes into play, because when you select a color, the opposing player isn't allowed to choose that same color on their turn. So there's times where you have to decide whether or not to block your opponent from claiming certain squares. I liked the theming, the pacing, and most of all, the satisfaction of claiming more and more of the board each turn. I think the only downside is its limited board space, which can limit strategic plays, but I still like it. B tier. Basketball is just plain simple fun. Each player competes in multiple rounds to see how many baskets they can score during the time limit. It's very reminiscent of those basketball machines you see in arcades. And just like those machines, the concept is very easy to pick up and play. Simply swipe upwards to shoot your shot. You will have to slightly aim your shooting as the balls get placed in random spots along the bottom, but unlike darts, I feel like this is way more accurate. It's simple, quick bursts of fun that's definitely up there as one of the more addicting games on this list. Solid B tier. Nine Ball is an interesting case as it's treated as a whole separate game in the iMessage game list, but looking at it critically, this just feels like another game mode for 8-Ball, which is already on the list, so for that, I had to dock it some points. I mean, it feels really solid and satisfying. The controls work surprisingly well for a billiards-style game on a mobile phone. However, looking at how the game works, I'm just not the biggest fan of 9-Ball personally. There's 9 balls on the table, and the goal is to knock each ball into whichever pocket in numerical order. And whichever player knocks the final 9-Ball in, wins. My only problem with this game is whenever I'm striking balls into pockets, I can't help but think I'm just helping the opposing player. It does give each shot a little more pressure with it, but I just don't think the concept is that great. Again, structurally it's great, it feels good, however, it really should have just been a game mode for 8-Ball. And for that reason, it's B tier. Mini Golf is super solid. The goal is to have the least amount of strokes at the end of three or five courses. You adjust your power and angle and shoot your golf ball to the hole. It's, it's pretty simple. I think out of most of the games listed in iMessage, this one has some of the most replayability, which is a huge factor to consider. From my experience, each course is randomly generated with its shapes and obstacles. You can definitely tell it's random though, with some obstacles being placed in just the dumbest locations, but I feel like that adds to the chaotic nature of what mini golf brings at times. I think the replayability alone is why I have this one ranked as high as it is. It's easy to pick up and play, super replayable, and the pacing is solid as well. Starting off A tier strong. Word Games is technically a 3-in-1 deal, but since the iMessage list classifies it as 1, we're ranking it as 1. You have three quote-unquote modes to choose from. The goal of each one is the same, you're trying to assemble as many words as you can before time runs out. And depending on how big of a word you form determines how many points you get. Structurally is where things start to differ a little bit. Anagrams is probably the weakest out of all of them. You have a random set of letter tiles and your goal is to simply form as many words as possible with them. Word Bites would be my next pick. Essentially it works the same as Scrabble where you form words both vertically and horizontally. Tiles are scattered across the grid with some letters being permanently combined and you have full freedom to mix and match and spell as many words as possible. This one honestly gets extremely satisfying at times. And lastly, which is my favorite, we have Word Hunt. All you do is try and find as many words as you can see in this random grid of letters. Again, nothing really beats the satisfaction of seeing so many words and knocking them out in quick succession. When it comes to the word games, this one is definitely S tier. Wait, wow. A tier list within a tier list within me? 
this just doesn't feel right. All these games are honestly really great brain teasers. Each player gets the same letters to work with, and it's always fun to compare which words you missed or got compared to your opponent. They are games that require a little more focus than others, so I could see why people would prefer the more casual games, but for me, I actually really enjoy these. Solid A tier. Uh, th th this one is, uh, this one's pretty biased. Uh, I, I just really like Mancala. Mancala is a straight classic. I've played this one quite a bit growing up. The goal is to have the most beads in your bank by the end of the game. The way you fill that bank is by choosing a cluster of beads you want to move around the board. Once you choose one, you have to move each bead in sequential order, meaning one bead per pocket. Couple things to note, if you land your last bead in your bank, you go again. If your last bead wraps around and lands back on your side, and if beads are across from you, you steal them and place them in your bank. Overall, I just think Mancala is a solid game with some solid strategy that doesn't overstay its welcome. I could be nitpicky and say it's not as satisfying as playing Mancala in person, but you also don't have to worry about tediously placing every single bead in each pocket, so I feel like it kind of balances out. Again, I've grown up with this game, but looking at it critically, there's really nothing wrong with it. No regrets throwing this bad boy in A tier. Crazy 8 is one of the most unique games on this list. Not only does the game require 3 to 6 players, but you also play the game simultaneously which is extremely rare with these games. It's a nice change of pace having no wait time, and throwing this game in a group chat is genuinely pretty fun. The game itself, Crazy 8, is honestly just solid all around. It's the off-brand version of Uno, but fundamentally, it's the exact same game. And if you haven't played Uno, well... The door is right over there. I think having the ability to play with up to six players is such a great feature to have. And I could genuinely see this being really fun on bus or car rides. Solid A tier. Knockout was the most surprising game on this list for me. This game is genuinely a lot of fun. The goal is super simple, push your opponent's penguins off the ice platform. Each player will adjust their penguins' angles and power. Once each player has done that, they're then fired at the same time, slipping and bumping into each other. Each round the platform gets smaller and the last team standing wins. I really like the concept of this one. It's a game of prediction and mind games. This is one of those games on the list that actually benefits from playing in the same room as each other. It's so fun predicting, anticipating, and seeing your opponent's reactions to your moves. And when you do get the perfect prediction, man, it just, it just feels so good. It's super simple on paper, but definitely can get pretty deep with the mind games. Honestly, probably the most slept on game in iMessage history. A tier. Archery is a game that takes a lot of precision and skill. I really dig the formula of this one. It reminds me of an old Wii game I grew up on called Decca Sports. I highly doubt anyone remembers that game. <laughs> it had an extremely similar setup to this. Each round you have three arrows to shoot at the target with the closest rings in the middle scoring the most points. You also have to compensate for the win that's shown above the target. Players with the most points wins. When shooting, the cursor even has a little drift with it that replicates the precision that archery is supposed to have. I think it's super fun and easy to play. So fun, in fact, that I think it would have benefited with adding an additional round. It almost feels too short. A for archery. Chess is the most popular tabletop game known to man, and for good reason. It's extremely universal and strategic, being one of the most deeply complex games ever made. I'm, I'm not even gonna try and explain it. Do you really want me looking like this? With its deep level of strategy, one of my biggest complaints with chess is the wait times between turns. I mean, it makes sense, but man, having to sit there and wait and think and wait and think can take a toll on me sometimes. And that's why I think this game fits the texting formula perfectly. It takes away the grueling wait between turns with each player responding at their own pace. I can do my turn, occupy myself while I wait, and respond when needed. Couple things to note though, chess is probably one, if not the most longest game in this list. But isn't that what chess is? When you send this to someone, you better know what you're investing in. Another complaint that could be brought up is coming back to this game hours later could really mess up your strategy. But 
I don't think that's the biggest issue seeing there's no time limit on your turns or pressure from your opponent waiting on you. I think chess executes the iMessage formula extremely well, and I know there's way better options out there for chess veterans, but for the casuals looking to play a game of chess, I think this is a good alternative. S tier. Cup Pong is an instant classic iMessage game. If you send this to someone, chances are they've already played it or know how to play. I think it fits that happy medium of skill versus casual because it's very simple in concept, but there's some actual precision along with it. You swipe up to toss ping pong balls, and unlike darts, I feel like this game is way more accurate. Like seriously, who messed up darts? I feel like this is the only game on the list that accurately replicates its real life equivalent with its physics, as well as the feelings you get with how close you miss and make your shots. I think this is a perfect blend of casual, skillful, quick iMessage fun, which fittingly takes a spot in S tier. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. This is by far the best iMessage game. It has the perfect feel, the perfect length, the perfect amount of skill required. It's, it's fun, it's iconic, and is it really that obvious? I don't think this game needs an introduction or an explanation. 8-Ball is easily the best game in this lineup, and I wouldn't doubt if it's the most played. It's basically the face of iMessage games, and honestly, I think it deserves that title. It literally checks all the boxes I'm looking for in an iMessage game. It feels great with responsive reactions when striking balls into each pocket. It's very engaging and skill-based with having to adjust your angles, power, and even curve on the cue ball. And the pacing meets that happy medium of being able to play this game in quick succession or pick up and play whenever. I feel like the game's developers know this game is the best because I feel like it's been given the most love out of any other on this list. You have multiple modes to choose from, lots of features for optimization within the game, the physics feel very accurate to an actual game of billiards, the quality just speaks for itself. Some people may say the guides make this game a little too easy, but they even have options to play the game in hard mode with the guides turned off. I don't know if you could tell, but this game does not miss. I, I, I really don't have anything else to say. This game is the king, the top dog, and is my number one ranked iMessage game. And that's my official ranking. In the grand scheme of things, these games are very insignificant, but I would be lying if I didn't say they're charming in their own unique way. Over half these games honestly offer a pretty fun time, and if you happen to own an iPhone, shoot a couple of these games to some friends and let me know where you would rank them. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, uh, liking, sharing, subscribing is a great way to do so. But again, thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you guys here soon.